So I got asked the other day, Daya, how can you draw so good? Or how can you improve so fast? Like, your art's amazing. I wish I could draw like you. Um, you can. It's quite simple. Because today I'm going to be telling you a few, a few tips, a few tricks, and most importantly, more or less some motivation to help you better yourself as an artist. Now you may be looking at this video like, Daya, what the flying fuck are you doing? You are literally the most negative person I've probably ever met. And you may be right about that assumption. I am pretty negative. But you see, I really want to help people on their quest to learn how to draw properly. Because I started off horribly. Uh, I can even show you. This was the first ever drawing I ever drew on my phone. Mind you, I've had like 10, 12 years of practice. That's my first drawing. Now this is my most recent drawing. It really shows how far I've come. But today I'm going to show you how to more or less better your art, some tips to really uh, focus on your art, and more or less stuff that you really shouldn't give a flying fuck about, even if people give you a personal opinion, because creative criticism is just a justified way of bullying somebody. But that's besides the point. So let's get started. Now this is obviously a pretty obvious one. Practice. You need to learn to practice every single day, or practice whenever you get a chance to. Even if the drawing is garbage, you still got up and managed to draw something. Even if it's garbage. Trust me, I did this for like 3-4 months, and as time progressed, my art skill got progressively, progressively better. If you take the time out of your day to really focus on an art piece, and not just doodle a bunch of crap, the more time you put into an art piece, the more times it will get better as time progresses. The longest I've ever drawn had to be four hours. And for me, it didn't take that long. It felt like five minutes, but in reality, it was four hours. It's probably because I can draw fast. Some draw faster, some draw slower. It's more or less of how much you've practiced and how long you've been doing for. But say, for example, taking the time out of your day to work on an art piece for probably like two to an hour maybe is gonna help you a lot in the long run even if it's garbage like say for example say for example you're drawing a stick man right it may be bullshit and it may be the most practical thing you could draw but try to add more to that say for example you draw a stick man congratulations you drew a stick man add more to it uh draw a background even if it's garbage Draw a background. Okay, see if you can add a little tiny little bit of shading with the color black, since you're probably drawing with a pencil, or try to add some color to it. S just slightly, slightly keep going and adding more to the picture, but also learn about over detailing. Over detailing can really fuck it up an artist sometimes because it's too much for the actual person to look at. But you're adding all this cool stuff and the ver person who's actually going to look at it is going to literally die from a color overload. So, learn to more or less practice and learn about other things as you go along. On to the next tip. Now here's one that a lot of people have been asking me. Daya, how did you ever get your art style? Or, did you develop your art style or did you copy somebody else? And the answer to that is, I developed my own art style. Now, finding one's true art style is a quest that you have to do on your own. You can't really help, like, get help to help an art style. You have to, as you progress through your art experience, develop that art style. My art style is what you would refer to as the most simplistic art style known to man, next to stick figures. But it is simplistic because I can't really draw this hyper-realism type of stuff. Maybe you can one day, but I can't. So my art style is more or less about simplicity. Now, you may have an art style that you haven't discovered yet that is more about, you know, supreme shading or coloring, or it could be a simplistic one. It's all about how long you've been drawing, or what's easier for you to draw. You say, for example, you could draw an anime eye. It's easy for you to draw. Or, if you have a hard time drawing an anime eye, draw a circle. A circle can be the best form of an eyeball, even though it's simplistic. Say for this, for example, most of my eyeballs are circles. But, if you add eyebrows, it makes a whole difference. But, it's more or less practicing and actually drawing more to develop your art style. And there's nothing wrong with changing it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with changing your art style. Because, you know, sometimes you suffer with something called same face syndrome, which is where you draw the same face with every single character over and over and over again. 
The best way to avoid this is to have variety with your characters. Say for example, tiny eyes, slanted eyes, tiny face, long face, stuff like that. You know, long hair, short hair, stuff like that. But it's not, a, it's not at all bad to change your art style, or it's not bad to reference an art style. Like anime, for example. That shit is the literally epitome of copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. But every single artist has their own interpretation of it. Say, for example, one artist has the ability to draw an eyeball differently, but draws the face the same way. Or one draws the face the same way, but changes the bone structure of the face. It's all about practice, and it's all about trying new things out. And that's the best way I can say how to find an art style. It'll come naturally. On to the next tip. Now this is something I see a lot of people struggle with, which is line art. Line art has to be one of the most easiest things to draw in my personal opinion, but everyone suffers with their own special thing. Line art being one of them. Line art has to be, in my opinion, easy, but it's more or less on how you draw. Now me, for example, I've drawn with my thumbs for more control for the past three years when I first started. Then I slowly moved on to computer, which I draw with a graphics tablet. Thank you, Lilith, for the tablet, by the way. Um, but pretty much, the best way I can describe how to better your line art is to slow in your hand movements. Think of it as trying to write. You're trying to write something, and you need to take your time, or else you'll fuck up your, your writing, and no one will be able to read it. Same goes with line art. Your best bet is to take the time, breathe, and calm down because if you are pretty much you know pissed off or you're super sad or anything like that you're not going to draw straight your best bet is to breathe in and then breathe out try to calm yourself down and slowly but surely draw your lines now some of you when you're first beginning is going to suffer with something where you can't keep your hand steady that's all right that thing goes away as you progress so what you can do is don't be afraid to stop a line mid-track. Say, for example, you're drawing a circle, and you drop halfway. Don't be afraid to go back to that point and continue on, because, yeah, it's going to look a little messy, but as time progresses, you will learn to not do that, and you will learn to complete the circle as time goes on. Same goes with, say, for example, shading. That shit comes naturally, although it does help to get a few references of how lighting works. But onwards to the next tip I have for you and probably the final tip. Now here's one that you are going to have to take as an artist, which is creative criticism. Now, me personally, I have been creative criticized a lot. To the point where I really just don't give a flying fuck about anyone's creative criticism unless it is something that I actually have to work on. And you should too! Say, for example, you draw eyes in your way perfectly, but some other guy who draws in a completely different style draws it differently and criticizes you for it. That is the point where you do not, under any circumstances, take their opinion, unless it is a good opinion, such as example such. Uh, your eyes are a little bit too big, and say, for example, they are a little bit too big, or your line art is a little bit messy, but that's okay, colors could work on that. That is a good piece of creative criticism. But going so far to the point where he's like, Wow, your eyes are too fucking big. That's ridiculous. Who the fuck would draw like that? Or, man, your eyes are too fucking small. Or, hey, the body's a little bit fucked up when you draw anatomy perfectly or you draw a different character differently. Because there are cartoon art styles and there is realistic art styles. Now, when a realistic drawer comes out of nowhere and starts criticizing your cartoon art for being not realistic, that's when you should tell them to fuck off. However, there's other things you should do and other things you should know about creative criticism. It can help you, but you need to determine which things are creative criticism or what things you should really look at. As an artist, you'll have your flaws, obviously. Everyone has their fucking flaws. But most importantly, you'll have flaws in your art that you are already aware of. However, you'll also have flaws in your art you are unaware of. Me, for example. For a long ass time, I could not draw a fucking body. Like, literally. I just kept going with the top all the way to the torso. Never drew anything else. But as I slowly progressed into anatomy, people were telling me, okay, the legs are a little bit too short, you make it a little bit longer, and try to focus 
on actually making the body and the muscles. That was good creative criticism. What wasn't good creative criticism is when they told me, Wow, that really fucking sucks. You should really work on your art. Or, Wow, you're fucking horrible. Work on your art. That's not creative criticism. That's called being a dick. But anyways, those are my tips for trying to become a better artist. As I said, practice makes perfect. And the more you go on with it, the more you will actually get better as an artist. Me, personally, I've been doing this for 10 years, most likely more, but it will take time. You just have to be dedicated to the craft, and you have to be, you have to be really freaking dedicated. Practice makes perfect, dedication, and even when you feel like your art is shit, all artists feel that way, trust me. Every single artist you'll ever talk to, <laughs> they'll say that their art is shit. And if they don't, they're fucking lying. Because every artist at some point in their life will say that their art is shit. But it's all about a learning process. It's all about getting to know your pen, your paper, and your drawing and stuff like that. And don't be afraid to say, for example, take a break a few days off an art piece. The longest I've ever taken off an art piece was like three days because... I just wasn't feeling it. I couldn't get motivated, and I didn't want to work on the art piece anymore. I came back, and bam, it was actually finished. Here's the drawing right here. But still, it's all about learning about certain tips and tricks, and I would recommend a few YouTube videos if you want to learn more about drawing. These are just tips that help me personally, and hopefully they help you. Because, by golly gee, <laughs> there's been times where I get hit with creative criticism, and while I'm in the middle of an art piece, and I feel like absolute shit, and I don't want to fucking draw. But you know what? Fuck critics, unless they're good ones. But that's besides the point. I've been the Diamond Storm, been a lovely audience, and this is to the point where I actually explain to you why I've been making more gaming videos than I do commentary videos. And that's for the simple fact of the matter is, I've been on a little bit of a break on commentary. For the point of the matter is, about a few days ago, my grandfather, on my father's side of the family, passed away. And a lot of you won't believe me on this. I don't give a flying fuck if you do or not. It's simply what I saw, and it was the most saddest fucking thing of my life. You don't have to believe me. I don't really care if you believe me. But what ended up happening, I was sitting here drawing some art, and I got news that my papa passed away. Not towards my mother, not towards my father. No one told me except for him. He came to me and told me. He told me to tell everybody that he loved them. And I knew it was him. Because I've seen ghosts, I've seen demons, I've seen everything. But when you feel a presence and you look to your left to see this golden specter with a heavenly glow telling you that they love you and telling you to tell everybody that he, they love you, it, it really hurts because I never got a chance to say goodbye to my papa in life, but I got a chance to say goodbye to him in death. And you may be thinking to yourself, man, that sucks. It truly does. It really does suck to say goodbye to him in death, let alone not say goodbye to him in life. It made me feel like a coward, and it made me feel depressed, and I remember sitting in my, in my room just crying my eyes out, because I couldn't be there to say goodbye to him properly. I had to rely on fucking God to let me say goodbye to him, and it just hurt me really badly. I couldn't make myself to make a proper commentary video, besides gaming or animation. I'm a little bit better now, but it still hurts. So I'm gonna mostly try to keep going on gameplay and animation, but I will occasionally make a commentary video. It's just I haven't had enough motivation to do it, and that's pretty much it. So I've been the Diamond Storm, you've been a lovely audience, hold up least tight, and please take these tips to heart, some of them at least, but most importantly, the one about criticism, because you're going to get criticized heavily in this goddamn field, obviously. But anyways, hold up leash tight, you're going for the next episode, and goodbye.